Good luck with life, doctor. My name is George. I'm Lexi. Lexi Gray. Gray, don't let them just stand here. Let's move, people. Are, are you Meredith Gray? Yeah, I'm, I'm Lexi. Great, move! Lexi Gray, I'm, I'm your sister. That girl out there, the dopey wide-eyed one, apparently we're related. I'm so sorry about before. I just was so nervous about meeting you. You're the girl from the bar. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, you, you work here. Yeah, I do. Girl from the bar. I'm the girl from the bar. She hates me. My sister hates me. Meredith is your sister. I didn't plan on being here. I was all set for an internship at Mass Gen, and then... My mother gets the hiccups, and I'm at a funeral. We all have problems. Moms die, and dads drink so much that they don't even know what year they're in. And sisters, I, I didn't even know that there was a Meredith Gray until a couple months ago. And, and she, she, she doesn't even want to talk to me. I'd give anything to not be here. So you, you change, you, you get over it. I'm here now. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. You are kind of awesome. I know. So I'm generally not a mean person. But I'm a person who just doesn't want to know you. And you are a person who's making that very difficult. So please, just stop making it so difficult for me to not know you. I don't know what it is that I did to you, but you know, we have the same dad. We do not have the same dad. My dad disappeared when I was five years old and I never saw him again. Does that sound like the daddy you grew up with? So I'm sure you are a very nice girl, Lexi. But I hope you can understand. You're not a girl I ever wanted to have to know. For what it's worth, Lexi Gray is a good girl. You're using the Gray sister angle to get in good with the attendings? I got that. You're an intern. Are we clear? Three? Lexi. What? It's Lexi, or Gray. It's not three. I have a name. I just wanted to say thank you for saving my ass today in surgery. Oh, that's my job, three. I like your costume. Oh, <laughs> well, Dr. Yang said that. Dr. Yang is screwing with you. Oh, I knew it. I am the other gray that Dr. Yang likes to humiliate and kick around. You know, every intern class has its run to the litter. Keep this up, this year it's gonna be you. I'm not a nice guy. I'm not looking for a relationship because I'm never good at them. The only thing you're ever gonna get from me is sex, that's it. Alex, please tell me that you don't live with Meredith Gray. I had no idea it was your house. I, and, and you know, I, I, I'm not the girl who sleeps around. I'm, I'm not, it's just, you know, I, there's so much going on at home. That... No drinking with Alex, no sleeping with Alex. What exactly did I ever do to you? Get your own friends. Get your own life. Stop living in mine. Screw you. Are you two sisters? No, I just, same last name. Wait, Dad, you're going out? Just down to the store. Dad. It's just down to the store. What do you need? Scotch, vodka, gin? Scotch. Don't tell Meredith. I need to talk to you about your dad. You know what? I don't want to talk about my dad. In fact, we're never going to talk about him again, OK? You helped me out once, now it's over. Murder! So, you know, he was drunk and he put his hand through a window. And he wasn't actually a problem. He was kind of charming. But I'd hate to see it happen again. So maybe you should think about keeping a better eye on him. He's a liar. And I'm glad. Really, I'm glad that you found him charming. I'm sure he was delightful. He's a blast after five drinks. Not so much after nine, though. He gets a little weepy and mean. He's a drunk, Meredith. Yesterday, he said that I was his favorite daughter. The day before, I was an ungrateful bitch. So, thank you for letting me know that I need to keep a better eye on him. Thanks.
did a good job today. That was not easy. What you did was not easy. It was brave. We were not prepared. We helped more than we hurt. I have no one. Lexi uh, was having a bad night, and I thought I would do something semi-sisterly. You cooked for me? It's no big deal. Just eggs and avocado and whatever cheese that was in the fridge. Did you find an apartment yet? Because I was thinking, uh, I was thinking maybe I'm going to get one. And... George, this is our home. We'll fix it up. With what money? I know it's all stolen. It's all stolen and, and, and hospitally and, and stolen. You can turn me in if you want to. You can report me for stealing, because obviously now I'm a thief. I've never even shoplifted a piece of gum before, and now I'm a thief. I don't have any friends here. You know, not, not really, except you. And, and I don't have a home to go to anymore, ex except here. Oh, right. Sorry. Yeah. He forgot he had sex with me. I just collected the forms. He forgot he had sex with me? So you made a mistake and you slept with Alex. No one has made more mistakes or been more publicly humiliated than me. Let me be an inspiration. <laughs> Take a needle, jab it into his subclavian so he can receive medicine and not broke. A central line. But I've, I've, I've never done one. Dr. Yang. I give you Tapley and you pass it over to your intern? What the hell's wrong with you? Hey, um... Can I talk to you about something? Look, she hates you, okay? She's not gonna say it to your face because she's too polite, but she thinks you're annoying. And you showing up here like the good little girl daddy didn't abandon is like the worst thing that's happened to her in months. I forgive you. Lexi, no, I forgive you. I forgive you for treating me like crap and I forgive you for letting your friend treat me like crap. Lexi, our dad abandoned you and your mom, by all accounts, was the meanest person ever. But ever since I knew you existed, I had this fantasy about my big sister. And you have failed on every occasion to live up to that fantasy. But I still love you, whether you are capable of letting me or not. So, I forgive you. Are you okay? Don't ask me if I'm okay. Okay. Ugh. Have some fire. Be unstoppable. Be a force of nature. Be better than anyone here. And don't give a damn what anyone thinks. There are no teams here. No buddies. You're on your own. Dr. Yang, I just scrubbed in on Walter Tapley's double valve replacement. That's what I got to do while you made notes in charts. So whatever crap you want to rain down on my head, go for it. Because I just saw the inside of Walter Tapley's heart, and that is something that you will never take away from me. Yeah. Okay. Okay, then. I want you to learn the running whip stitch. I'm gonna teach it to you. Take the needle. Dr. Yang, thank you. Uh-huh. Remember how I said I wasn't a thief? I think maybe I am. <gasps> Alexandra Caroline Gray. I couldn't help it. I had to know, and then once I knew, I knew. Oh, no. We have to get these back to the chief's office right now. It doesn't matter now. I know. I read them all. I tried to stop reading, but I couldn't. And I have a photographic memory, which is how I got through Harvard Med, my photographic memory. How can they keep you back for one day? Just forget about it! Photographic memory! I can't. Are you mad at me? No. Then why are you talking to me in that voice? And I did you a favor. But you didn't do me a favor. Uh, all that separates me from the rest of my class is one point. One point? You didn't do me a favor. Don't kid yourself. I'm retaking my intern test. Oh my god. Lexi, I know I was mad before, but thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. You thought that you'd defend your boyfriend to me and I just take it? He's not my boyfriend. You want me to be nicer to O'Malley? Please. Confess your love to him and I'll think about it. Shut up. When I like somebody, I make sure they know it. Life's too short to live any other way. What if he doesn't like me back? Oh, we're friends. I mean, right now you're probably one of my best friends. <sighs> He's an idiot. Why don't you diagnose that nerve? Because I've never even heard of that condition before. I remembered an article from the British Journal of ENT, and it was issue number 47, page 19, from 1964. A photographic memory. Dude, Alexopedia. Photographic memory, huh? Yeah. Periodic table. Go. 
hydrogen, helium, lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, neon, sodium, magnesium, aluminum, silicon, phosphorus, sulfur. I can keep going. Did you even ask for me? What? I helped you study. I helped decorate your stupid locker. You don't, you don't even see it. I am such an idiot. And you are a jerk. You didn't even think to ask for me. Screw you, Dr. O'Malley. So you're practicing on each other? How else are we supposed to learn? Why didn't you put in a chest tube? I was... I don't know how. What do you mean you don't know how? I mean, I learned that in my first week. Yes, you learned. You know. But I will never know because you not only won't let me try one, but you, you hog all our robots and you steal all our corpses. <sighs> Dude, I think you broke her. I'm in. I'm just wondering if you're channeling your tragic pain into uh, self-mutilation. Are you a secret cutter? No. Do not practice on yourself. That is insane. Death is so wrong about you. Why? What did she say? That you were a priss. We were trying to take out her appendix. Well, whose foolish idea was that? Mine. Little Gray. Little Gray? Little Gray. Big Gray. That's how I tell you two apart. I need you to tell Mark to keep his little Sloan out of Little Gray. He likes you. Who? Dr. Sloan? Come on, am I really so bad? No. I am. You're Meredith Gray's little sister. You are forbidden fruit. You are 25. You're a fetus. 24, I skipped third grade. I feel dirty. He may, he may, may have broken a, a, a bone. I, I, I broke his bone. You're kidding, right? <laughs> I'm sorry that I hurt you. I am now going to climb into bed with you and I'm going to stroke your hair because that's what I like to have done for me when I'm hurt. What's going on with you and Mark Sloan? What? Nothing. If we're in a relationship, then I need to be in it in front of my sister. I, I, I don't do dirty secret flirting with you anymore, okay? I, I told you, if you want to go public with me, with us, then I will do dirty public flirting. I mean, I will, I will flirt publicly, not dirtily. Maybe a little dirtily. But until you tell Derek, our relationship is going to continue to consist of you hiding in the attic and me smuggling snacks past Mare's bedroom. Do you know what that makes you? Your boyfriend? Anne Frank. I am dating Anne Frank, and I'm tired of it. I, I, I want to go downstairs with you. I, I want to tell the Germans to kiss my ass. I want to tell him. I'm so sorry. It was worth it. Maybe a little. <laughs> Thank you. Even though a 5% survival rate is bad, it's really bad, you say? Screw the odds. People die of the hiccups. My mother died of the hiccups. And survival rate for that is, what, 100%? The odds are that she should be alive right now. The odds are that the, the odds mean crap. So people should face it, and they should fight. Yes, the odds are against us. I'm a one-woman wrecking ball. All I do is break you. I'd say our survival rate is about 3%, and that's... that's... that's bad. But it's not nothing. And, and I don't think that we should give up on this, at least not yet, because... Okay. You think you broke me, little Gray? You're the one who put me back together. They think that we're ugly, but I know that we're beautiful. <laughs> I'm just sad because I didn't get a chance to see you in the actual dress. You will. You're my sister, Lexi. You're in the wedding. Oh my god. I'm gonna be a bridesmaid? Your father's here. He's 29 days sober, just out of rehab. He's taking it seriously. He's working his steps. The ninth step is to make amends wherever possible. It's the key to an alcoholic's recovery. To take responsibility for the wreckage of his past. My dad's here. Okay. He's here, and he's sober. And I would really like for you to meet him. I'd start looking for a condo. I was, you know, thinking maybe you'd, uh, 
You come with me. Absolutely, no, I, I, I would love to see it. I'm so happy for you. I was asking you to move in with me. Not right away. About five years. I'll still be a resident. So, Stevens and Karev are residents, Meredith's a resident, Bailey's a resident, all married or soon to be. I'm sorry, are you asking me <laughs> to, to, to marry you? No. <laughs> Why would you? Um, should we be having this conversation? No, probably no, not. I, <laughs> George O'Malley jumped in front of a bus today. He knew what he was doing and he did it anyway. And he did it to save a life. I was a bad friend to George. I abandoned him completely. I, I, I just moved out and, and stopped talking to him. I, why? Because, because he didn't think I was as hot as I thought he was, or be, because he, he didn't he didn't love me back. What did that guy have? Seriously, he was kind of a dorky little dude. Stop! Stop talking. Sorry. sorry. <laughs> he he died. I. George died. We buried her son this week. He had an accident, like you. He, he wasn't even as bad off as you were, and he didn't make it. Clara, I know that it doesn't feel like it, but it is a miracle that you lived. It is a miracle. So you should call your mom. She would want to know the truth. Nothing. No. You don't even want a drawer. No. I think you're using me to avoid moving in with your boyfriend. I did it. You did it. Lexi, will you call my mom? Hey. It's a merger. It's hard to see when your job's on the line. Don't tell me Lexi's not worried. Is he in here? Stop the oh. You can't tease me about the blood thing because it's not funny. And if it gets back to the chief, I may as well just pack my things. You need to stop worrying about the chief. All this is in your head. 2002, Milwaukee. Third Street Hospital merged with St. Anne's. 13 residents were let go. Stop. Ah. You need to pull yourself together. You deserve to be here. Act like it. Okay. You're the one who told me to go act like I deserve to be here, and I did. And now I lost the schizophrenic, and I am gonna be fired unless I find the schizophrenic. This is me getting cut from the program. You're already amazing. I am just starting out. I really admire you. In case I get cut and don't get a chance to tell you. Plus, you're really pretty. You can have the rest. Are you serious? <laughs> I'm gonna go to the chimney myself. I'm gonna tell her you're the best second year resident I've ever seen. <laughs> I'm safe. I didn't get cut, Mark. I'm, I'm safe. <laughs> Up off the floor of a bar, Lexi, that might be a clue. I haven't been drinking, I swear. The only thing that can save your life is a transplant. An alcoholic has to be sober at least a year before it qualifies for a donor liver. I'm only 90 days. I'll do it. I can't ask you to do something like that. It's, it's major surgery. You're not asking. You're my dad. Let me give my dad a piece of my liver. End stage liver disease. Needs my liver? Giving him some. Go ahead, Steve. Whoa, whoa. What is there to talk about? Well, it's major life-threatening surgery. We need to decide these things together. You can't just go into the knife and leave me a note. No, I, I would have paged you. I'm your boyfriend, Gray. He's my dad. We rushed Dr. Gray's labs. She wasn't a match. He's going to die, Meredith. And so I'm asking you to give something to me. I'm asking. I'm asking you to give me my dad. Because as crappy as he was to you, he was wonderful to me. You have his blood, and I don't. So I'm asking you, give me 
my dad. I don't know what it's like to have a father, but I do know what it's like to have a sister, and it's good. So I'm gonna go get admitted, and we'll do this. If it's bad news, I don't wanna wake her. Wake her. You know what? I'll ask again in a sec, okay? Press another 25 fentanyl. Okay, Evan, you're just gonna talk to me, all right? <laughs> Dr. Gray, you grew up here, right? So you get used to the rain? Lexi. Dr. Gray, step out. Come back when you've got it together. No, you left him. Come here. You left him alone. When were you planning to? I'm sorry. I just, I, I feel like... No, you don't get to feel anything. Because he's feeling everything. His every nerve is exposed and raw. And we have to make him feel worse before he's gonna feel better. So if you're having feelings, then you need to shut them down. You need to shut them down and talk to him about his future and remind him that he has one past all of this pain. And if you can't do that, if you can't do your job, then you find someone who can and you send them to me. My patient needed me. Yeah, here's the thing about the rain. It usually just drizzles. It's, it's not like tonight. But when it stops, everything is super green and it's beautiful and it smells like trees. You know that smell? a case at Mayo where the surgery took 17 hours. What happened to the patient at Mayo? He died. That's why it only took 17 hours. I have another job for you. You gave me the idea, actually. I need somebody in the OR who's gonna remind me to take breaks, to bend my legs, to drink water. I will be your patient, essentially. You want me to be your doctor? If Dr. Sloan's okay with you giving up his services, of course. You love me. And this is a once-in-a-lifetime tumor. Go get your uh, rogue on. I'm his doctor, basically. Sounds more like you're his bitch. A diaper? It's for the surgery. That's genius. You never have to leave the OR. You can hydrate all you want. This is the definition of hardcore. You're like an astronaut. I wore a diaper yesterday, yes. And I will wear one today. If it helps get Dr. Shepard through this surgery, I will wear a diaper. I'm gonna wear it, and I'm gonna wear it with pride. And if I have to pee in it, oh, I'll pee. Because I am a surgeon. This is America and I will do what needs to be done. So you can kiss my hardcore diaper-wearing ass. Somebody's a gift. I mean, technically it's for the hospital, not Arizona, but since your birthday's on Friday, um, how does little Gray know about your birthday and I don't? Birthdays are just days, like any other days. I don't like them, don't celebrate them, no big deal. $25 million, that's a big deal. I'm, I'm her girlfriend, I have to do something for her birthday, right? Yes. Oh, of course you do. Oh, oh, uh, uh, uh surprise party. Whoa, 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 bad idea. Surprise parties are hostile, they're dark. People jump out and scream at you. Mm -hmm. They never come to any good. Told you. I don't get it. You know, the best birthday of my life was the surprise party that my parents threw. I, I, I loved it so much. How old were you at this party? Seven. Mm. Like I said, it speaks for itself. 
My name is Sloane Riley, and uh, I'm pretty sure you're my dad. Sloane here is going to move in with us for a little while. Did you tell Sloane to move out? No. Not that it's a bad idea, but... You're making her feel like crap. I'm pregnant. Yeah. I'm having a baby, and, um... That's why I dropped out of school, and that's why my mom kicked me out. Stay. After the baby's born, live with me and Lexi. Raise the baby with us. Well, I think you're doing it for me. Don't make me out to be the selfish one. You don't get to unilaterally decide to let a teenager and her infant move into our house. Don't make me choose between you and her. Why? Because you'll choose her? Yeah. I'll choose her. I think our relationship just ended. I thought you were shacking up with what's-his-face. I'm not. I'm too young to be a grandmother. <laughs> I'm just supposed to be working like a dog and, and, and then come home and, and do stupid things. <laughs> I don't even know what people my own age do anymore. I know something stupid you can do. Izzy leaves and Mark gets a kid and you two decide that the best way to deal is to get drunk and mash your genitals together? No freaking way you get to judge us or give relationship advice. Besides, you were a total dirty mistress like two weeks ago. Are we calling me a dirty mistress? That was two years ago. Alex and I, we've done it before. We, that was recycling. It was like good for the environment. Izzy's gone. I was horny she was there. Oh crap, I am a dirty mistress. Oh god, you're gonna tell Derek and then Derek's gonna tell Mark that I'm a whore. No, I am not going to tell Derek and neither are you. You slept with Karev. Yeah. I... I can't even look at you right now. Must uh, suck to work on Valentine's Day. I don't believe we've met. I get it. You get dumped by your boyfriend and you go for the extreme makeover. Chicks always do that. I didn't get dumped. You were with Sloan until he dumped you? He didn't dump me. He forgot about me. He decided that we were going to start a family and didn't ask me. He forgot I was even there. He, he just left me. Mark's moving on. Like, really? That's good, isn't it? Isn't that what you wanted? No, it's it's that it's it's great. It's that's um that's perfect. It's a per it's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's just sex, okay? There's no feelings involved. Right, because you are a no-feelings type of girl. Your heart lives in your vagina. My heart does not live in my vagina. You are handing your power over to a boy because he's giving you sex. I'm not. I, I'm back to Bailey. I know everything. And you have a super power. That memory of yours is a super power. And on top of it, you're a good doctor. And yet, you're letting Alex Karev treat you like a scut monkey. I don't care how good the sex is. If that's what it costs, you're paying too much. I'm, I'm not. Scut I'm... monkey all day. You can't be an ass to me all day and then expect me to give you respect. You can't be an ass to me all day and then expect me to give you sex. I am a nice person, and I am nice to you. So whatever your damage is, you better start to be freaking nice to me, or I am not spreading my legs for you anymore, no matter how much I may want to. Now give me a damn beer.
She did great in there. She was a total trooper. The surgery went great. We got the tumor, all of it, with good margins. Oh, thank God. Oh. Dr. Gray, thank you. Thank you so much. Would you like to see her? Can I? She should be waking up any minute. Dr. Weber, what's happening to her? She may have stroked out. We need to find out right away if there's any brain activity. If there's not, then we need... She, she looks great. Mrs. Clark's scan showed a massive hemorrhage in her brain, and the EEG showed minimal brain activity. People can live for years on these machines. Mr. Clark, you can't unplug her. Legally, we don't have a choice, sir. You said the surgery went fine. That's what you said. It did, but... No, no, you're not a doctor, you're a child! And you're useless! I'm done talking with you! I told the patient's husband that she was fine, that her surgery went perfectly, and the next thing we know, she has a stroke, and we are supposed to just unplug her. You know, I, know, I know that I am supposed to toughen up. I know that I am supposed to not care, but how? How do you not care? It's the hardest part of the job. The very hardest part. How did you learn? I'm still learning. I'm so sorry. Alex, are we a couple? What? I need to know what we are. Yeah, we're together. We're, we're a thing. Whatever. Lex, I'm still in love with you. I tried to hunt to me, but Ed Sloan's gone. I want another chance. I'm in love with you. Mark, I, I have a boyfriend. I'm saying you can have a husband. You're the head of hospital security. How do you not know? I know it's never happened before. No, I found it. Locked out. Nobody moves in or out. Yeah. Nobody moves. Nobody breathes until we know what's going on. Locked out. Kind of crazy, right? You think it's uh, serious? Can you just sign the order? Is Karev thing serious? Mark? I miss you. Can you just sign the order? Sir, you can't leave this area. The hospital is in there. I'm getting out of your car. Mark, we have to get him out of here. He's losing blood. We can't move him. Shut up and help. He's losing a lot of blood. Damn it. He needs a transfusion. I'll go. I'll go get it. I can't do nothing. I will be right back. I only plan to shoot Dr. Shepard and Dr. Weber and you. Machines. Your hands killed my Allison. This was my fault. I unplugged his wife. I'm so sorry. This was my fault. I love you. Do you hear me? I love you. He needs an emergency to economy. So, do one. I. And even if I could magically do one correctly, his aorta can only be clamped for so long before he suffers neurological damage. I, I, I can't. I... There isn't any other way. No, I might, I might have read something. I might know another way. I, if I could just, I killed that man's wife. I found a way to do that. I made myself kill Gary Clark's wife, so I should damn well be able to do this. We can't just let him die. This floor is clear. We're going to evacuate you now.
You know, I, I read a lot about trauma and how uh, sometimes people just up and change their lives. They say that the trauma was the best thing that could have happened to them. And how have you been, Dr. Gray? You've been through a lot since I last saw you. That's, that's the actual name of what happened to us. It was a mass murder. A, you can't call it a terrorist attack because the murders weren't political in nature, and we weren't the victims of a serial killer because Mr. Clark would have had to murder several people over a period longer than 30 days in order to qualify as a serial killer. And we, we could call it a spree killing, which is defined as killings at two or more locations with no break or pause in between because Mr. Clark shot that guy in his car before he got here. But I'm not sure that that counts as a true second location since it was so close to the hospital, which means that we were a mass murder because it happened at one place by one person and more than four people were killed. She's not my responsibility. She was your girlfriend. No, she's not anymore. My patient didn't bring her meds, and she doesn't even know their names. If, if I give her albuterol and she's on propanolol, then she'll stop breathing. If, if, if I give her warfarin and she's on ibuprofen, then she'll, then she'll bleed out. If, if, if I give her diphenhydramine and she's on doxepin, then she'll die. She, do, 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 do you think she wants to die? I think she wants me to kill her. Do, 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 do you want me to kill you? Because you, you could just get a gun and it would be a lot faster. Correct. Get her out of you here. Know what, so, why don't somebody find a gun? You cleared Lexi Gray for surgery? Dr. Sloan, I'm in, I'm in session. I had to check her into psych last week. I had to commit her against her will. And you just clear her for surgery? What the hell kind of doctor are you? It's okay. You can talk to him. I'll come back. Yeah, walk away. You're good at that. Psych put her on heavy doses of antipsychotics and benzos. And then she slept for almost 50 hours straight. When she woke up, she was no longer a risk to herself or others. I mean, she has PTSD. Most of you do. For her, it caused severe sleep deprivation and led to a breakdown. All she needed was sleep. So protocol is that she goes back to work. See? I'm OK. Really. I'm back. I choose dermatology over multiplex. No, I go gynecology over dermatology. I think I'd go with psych. That was a joke. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. That was good. Uh -huh. You look hot. The whole uh, crazy eyes, tight dress thing, it's, uh, it's working for you, for whatever it's worth. You think that you are so badass because you lived? I'm the reason that you lived. And while you were dying, you were crying out for the wife who left you. So that's the opposite of badass, for whatever it's worth. <sighs> yes! I am the crazy one. I am the one who freaks out and screams at people like that. Are you okay? But everybody, please, just stop asking if I am okay, okay? It is like a one in a million thing. Actually, it's more like a one in 6,250 kind of thing. Lightning kills between 150 to 300 people every year in the U.S. alone. Like, see? Well, no, I mean, it's it's still rare. I mean, it's not like, say, handgun death. I mean, that's that's one in 325. Lexi, you okay? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, saying, I'm saying she's lucky. That's, you know, hey, yay you. No damage to your spine, which means I can go. I mean, you should observe her. Who's free? I'm free. I'm fine, and I'm free. Oh. What are you doing? Nothing. Other Gray, are you free to scrub in? Absolutely. I'm standing right here. Camp Nerf, go prep him. I'll see you up there. I'm fine. Well, great, then you can keep an eye on Carrie. She never saw it coming. No, 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 no. 50 says she's back in the cuckoo's nest by lunch. Oh, you need to help me. I need your help. Hey, okay. She's paralyzed, and it's not going to go away. She's not going to get any better. Lexi, hold on. You're all right. No, no, it's not me. It's Carrie Schultz. She got hit out of nowhere, and it's not going to get any better. I need you to listen to me. Look, this has nothing to do with that. She's... No, just shut up and please listen to me. Make sure she's all right. I'm trying. 
It's an easy procedure to relieve the pressure. And uh, walk again? You'll be out on the field in no time. Book an OR, I'll see you in there. For, for an actual surgery? Yes. <sighs> Thank you. I had a good day today. I saved a girl today. I did that. Wait. I went through a rough patch, and you helped me. And I appreciate that. But I am moving out of it, and you won't let me. You know, you're treating me like I am a basket case. And, and, and everyone is watching you, and they're believing you. I am a good doctor, and I don't deserve for people to think that I am anything less than that. So could you please just leave me alone? Can you do that? Can you just leave me alone? You got it. For God's sake, Mark never thought you were a psycho. He loves you. That's why he stares at you, because he can't keep his eyes off the woman he loves. Ow! Oh, sorry. Jeez, sorry. Yeah. Do you know how long April and Jackson are planning to stay in the house? Uh, as long as they like black. Well, April's taken over Izzy's room, which was fine when it was temporary, but I live in the attic and I sleep next to Christmas ornaments. April's best friend just died. She's all alone. I'm not evil. It's just, she's annoying. Okay, I find her annoying. Really? I find you much more annoying. How would you feel if I started a chore wheel at the house? You'd be surprised how well it works. Are you moving in? Why, do, do you think that's not okay? Should I talk to Meredith about that? Yeah, that's up to you, but I wouldn't bring up the chore wheel. Meredith would hate that. Uh, Lexi and I were just talking about the housing situation. It is, is about Izzy's room. I no, 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 no. It's not about Izzy's room. It's about a chore wheel. April would like to start one. That's a great idea. What? Great. I'll, uh, I'll set it up tonight. Hey, um, how'd it go this morning? Yeah. What happened this morning? But you're okay, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. Why wouldn't you be fine? Nothing. I have to go. What was this morning? You should talk to Meredith. I have been a total bitch to April all day because of you. You know that? What? You worry about April. You let her have Izzy's room. You talk to her about your doctor's appointments. And I went crazy. Alex ditched me in the psych ward. Mark slept with Derek's sister. And now I find myself relating to the crazy jealous lady who drives into laundromats. April, you should go. April was there. That's why she knows about my doctor's appointment. And I did know that Mark slept with Amy, but I didn't think you cared. I can never tell what the hell's going on with you two. And as far as the psych ward goes, you were not alone. I sat by your bedside for 36 hours while you slept. You're not crazy, Lexi. You're a gray. Is the uh, pain any better? Look, you seem really sweet, but this whole, like, Super busy, messy hair, running around like a banshee yeah. thing you have going. Doesn't exactly inspire confidence. I mean, you don't even know my case. Meg Whalen, age 28, tibial plateau fracture caused by a bicycle accident. At least that's what she told the ER. But she told Dr. Torres that you were going 30 miles an hour, which makes me think that you run your boyfriend's motorcycle. And I'm gonna guess he has a license for it and you don't. This is off the top of your head. I memorized your chart. She's good. Christy Cornell, age 28, she's here for a gladioplasty. Could I see what it would look like kicked up uh, just a couple points? Sure. Mm, a couple more? A couple more. That's up. That's it. That's my ass. The only reason a woman does something like this to her body is to impress a guy. Okay, sure, it starts with a giant butt. And then the next thing you know, she's giving up her friends, she's moving in with them before she's even ready. And if she's not careful, she'll find herself a 26-year-old stepmother to the pregnant daughter she didn't even know he had. And then she's single, dyeing her hair a new color. And you know what? It's really hard to manage your roots and you've been committed to the psych ward. Psych ward. <sighs> it happens. Dr. Gray is concerned that uh, you might be going through with this surgery for the wrong reasons. Dr. Gray, I hope you don't take this the wrong way. But even through your lab coat, I can tell you have an amazing ass. And with an ass like that, I bet you know what it's like to find the perfect pair of jeans. Jeans that make you feel like you're the sexiest person ever put on a pair of pants. 
And I envy that because I never have. So, Dr. Gray, I am getting a big, juicy, easy to grab onto ass. And you better believe I'm doing it just for me. You are so nice. <laughs> I don't want to go home yet. You want to see us give a lady a really big ass? Were you just checking out my ass? Not the first time. Won't be the last. No. Okay, but I don't understand. I'm on your service. I don't need you. The craniotomy's been canceled. I don't have anything for the rest of the day. But so what am I supposed to do now? Go study. Study what? I don't care. Lexi, go somewhere else. Look, Shepard didn't need me, so I took a nap in the research library. Give me, give it to me. Okay, who is it? Is it Bono? It's totally Bono. It's all over the hospital. It's not Bono. Okay. Not okay. Okay, that's addicting. Put it away before my guy wrestles you to the ground. You might have just gotten yourself fired. Or arrested. Probably both. Yeah, well, April is the only friend I have left here, so... Don't be stupid. It's Lexi, wake up. Trauma demands a cool head. If you're not up to this, then... No, I'm good. Thanks. You can talk to me, you know, if you want to talk. About what? I hear you every night. Yeah, you know, I'm just saying, I had sleep problems and they turned out to be real problems. Yeah, well, I don't have any problems. So what is your problem? Tell them he's gonna feel pretty awful. That he lived and his brother died. He'll hate himself for it. He won't want to talk about it. He'll be glad they know. All right. All right. You're removing a gallbladder from someone's mouth. I mean, no incision, no scar. It's like you were never there. I, sorry, I'll stop talking. You want to do one of these? The, the trick is how bad do you want it? Um. When I was little, I wanted a pony. Like, really, really wanted a pony. This feels a little bit like that. Good, because I'm having a contest. Hi. Hi. I miss you. Mark. What, you saying you don't miss me? Pretty much what I'm saying. You seeing someone? Yes. His name's Andrew Rapp. He had a tumor removed from his pancreas three days ago, and I'm trying to make sure he doesn't develop a fistula. Oh, my gosh. So, you know what? When I was little, I, I wanted a pony, too. And you know what happened? I, uh, I worked really hard, and I got one. <laughs> Sparkle. That was the name of my pony. Dr. Kepner, your patient, Mrs. Hathaway, just came into the ER. She's in septic shock. CT showed a fistula. Dr. Bailey wants you in OR2 right away. No, oh, Mrs. Hathaway, we just discharged her three days ago. She was fine. And then there were two. Eli, I need another sample of Mr. Rab's fluid. Oh, that's gonna be tough. I took the drain out. You what? No, with the drain in, he can't turn over, which means he has to sleep on his back, which means he has to sleep in. So... Uh, call radiology. Look, if Dr. Bailey wants to put back in, then I will. No, she's in surgery. Well, then it'll have to wait. Fine. Okay, you know, I'll, I'll do it myself. You're not touching that patient. Twelve years I've been here. Now, you residents, you come and go, but this is my home, and you are my guest. And right now, you are no longer welcome. What's the emergency? Oh, uh, I need a favor. A nurse hates me. You're a resident. I'm sure all the nurses hate you. Yes, well, they love you. I think you love me. Fine. Okay, whatever. Can you please just talk to him? Fine. I'll talk to him. But you gotta meet me at Joe's tonight for a drink. You are unbelievable. And that's why you love me, because I'm unbelievable. You and I, we don't work, okay? We, we've been through this. One drink. One drink. Oh, God. okay, there he is. You yes. lying? Yeah. Two drinks. Fine. Fine. Stay here. Uh, I did what I could. I'm time to get off. What? That's it? You didn't do anything. See you at night. You going out with Sloan tonight? One drink. 
And then you are going to interrupt us and tell me that there's a medical emergency. I know I agreed to have a drink with you, but as I walked here, I realized how unfair that was. You know, it's, it's, it's unfair to you, it's unfair to me, because really nothing has changed. I mean, I mean you're, you're still in a very different place in your life than I am, and, and you want different... Oh, Lexi, I just got a page. Bailey wants us back in the ICU. Can you deal with it, please? Yep. Oh. You're gonna make us late. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ugh. Okay. Go. Going on. Major Seattle area shooting. We have reports that a gunman has opened fire on students and faculty. Great. I'm fine. I'm fine. Go to the pit. Make sure we're stocked. Call the blood bank. I'm fine. Call the blood bank. Tell them to give us all the oneg they have. Cranial hemorrhage. Uh, her pupil just blew. She needs burr holes and, 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 and a trauma flap. We gotta evacuate that clot. Okay, we can do that. We can do that. We saw 26 patients. 26 victims. And we had no casualties. No one died. This kid comes out looking all sloney. Callie's pregnant. Oh my god. That's great. She loves babies. Did, did they do a, a, a turkey baster thing or something? I mean, wait a minute. Okay, so wait. Arizona just got back and they were they doing. Wait, was this before they. Has your father been having abdominal pain? Abdominal pain. It well, sounds like abdominal pain. Thatcher Gray is not an easy man to get information from. Our, our father's here in the hospital? Yeah, I admitted him an hour ago. You didn't know he was coming? Okay, look, just do me a favor. Go take a blood sample and try to get some more information out of him. I, I need someone who speaks Gray. Yeah. You're sick enough that you need to come into the hospital and you don't even call me? Pain comes and goes. I... So what, you, you thought that you would just sneak in and then quietly reject Meredith's liver, not even make a fuss? Just, um, calm down. Oh, no, I am calm. I am so calm. I'm like the calmest one. Okay, good. Because th there's something else that I should have told you. Uh, how do I? Oh, there you are. Sorry, I got turned around and then I ended up back in the lobby. No, no, no. No, no, no. No. Oh, no. oh God. What? Sorry, are you in pain? Uh, yeah. Not a sponsor. I am so sorry. This was not the way that I wanted to meet you. Well, I didn't even know there was a you to meet. You no, know, I'm sorry. But... Okay, Mr. Gray. Oh, hello. Dr. Bailey, this is Danielle. Danny. 
Hi. Yes, and Danny, it's my father's girlfriend, whom I've just met just now. Oh, I see. I'm constantly taking pills. His anti-rejection meds, not like speed or anything. Because that would be inappropriate. Um, when did the pain start? Uh, last week, Thursday. I, actually, you might not want to hear this part. I'm a doctor. All right. Well, we were being intimate. Oh, and no. I was on top. Uh, 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 okay. You okay? You need me to talk to him? Mark, no. My day's been too messed up to have you in it, too. Meredith, you have to come see Dad. Oh, does he want more organs? He wouldn't say. He was too busy loving up on a tattooed 20-year-old. I want to see your dad making out with his tatted-up fiance. They're not engaged. Are you sure? Meredith, please. Hi. Oh, get in there. And do what? We'll make it stop. There's no way she's 20. She's got to be like 26, 27. I'm 27. Oh. Gross. Ugh. You coming? I'm not going in there again. Seriously, Lexi? I can't. Well, then I'm going back to work. Meredith! Oh! Oh! Yeah! Hey, uh, move, oh, please. Oh. I'm gonna pay it's Bailey. This is what happened last time. See, Miss Cole. Okay, well, I'm sorry. Will you please let him talk? He can't talk. You know, it's here. Ow! Right, all right. Baby, it's gonna up, be please. okay. I'm okay, sorry. Right, hey, back up. I need to do something. Please just tell me. Okay, I back the hell up right now. <laughs> It could be kidney stones or your prostate. My prostate, or you're saying he could have cancer. He, he can't have cancer. That's what happens when your boyfriend's an old man. Old men get cancer. Lexi. I am terrified over here, and I've got questions. You're terrified? We're his family. I'm his family, too. No, you're not his family. You're his midlife crisis. Lex, Lexi, that's enough. You're out of line. Are you? Fine. Lexi. Le this is how he operates. He starts up new families, stops talking to the old ones. He'll go off, marry Danny, the tattooed lady, have six little midlife crisis babies, and I'll never hear from him again. It's exactly what he did to you. It is not exactly what he did to me. Of course it is. Lexi, my mother had an affair and then took his kid across the country. Your mother died, and he was miserable, and he started drinking, and he destroyed his liver. This isn't about you. He found someone who makes him happy. Just give him your blessing. Let him be happy. What are you talking about? Don't defend him. You hate him. Hate him with me. Lexi, I love you, but you have to grow up. And give him your blessing. What a bunch of crap. You know, let him be happy. What about me? You know, everybody's making these huge life decisions, and they're not even considering how it'll affect me, how I'll feel. You know, starting up new families and springing it on me, and it's already a done deal. Now, hey, Lexi. Guess what? Found a tatted up skank to be your new mommy. Hey, Lexi, I'm gonna have a baby. You're just gonna have to be okay with that. Hey, wait a second, your dad's having a baby? No, not my dad. Mark. Mark is having a baby. And he didn't even ask my opinion. He just clobbered me with it again. And he's leaving me behind. Again. So we're done. You know? We have to be. I miss him. <sighs> Crap. My dad's tatted up skank isn't the bitch. I am. Lexi. Will you please just make sure that he calls me? Yes, of course. Thank you. Is that a hooker on your shoulder? I was drunk. Okay. So, what's your plan? My plan for tonight is sleep. I was gonna hit Joe's before heading home. You wanna come? I just need to crash. Maybe tomorrow? For sure, yeah. Well, your new lungs should leave Portland in about two hours. No, you haven't taken any of your cystic fibrosis meds since last night, right? No food, no water, no drugs. Great. So we'll just do one last workup, and then we'll get you to the OR. That's, that's about right. <laughs> just gave us your firstborn. You need a drink of water, Julia? <laughs> just... <laughs> yeah, well, sorry. Dornace. It's mine. 
It has Julia's name on it. I'm gonna go. Wait, Julia, do you, you have cystic fibrosis? Go. No, wait a minute. You know how dangerous cystic fibrosis patients are to each other? We know. Your disease isn't contagious to anybody in the general population. It's not like you can't date. You just can't, you can't date each other. End the relationship or you don't get the lungs. Maybe it'll be okay. You know, m maybe it's not a waste. They love each other. It, it is rare. What if they are soulmates? Thinking about Sloan again. I had a feeling I'd find you here. The lungs are in. So far, so good. I'm gonna tell her I'm here? Dr. Altman? No. No, I'm pretty sure you're gonna leave. Here's the thing. You're killing him. You're taking a gun and killing him. And there is nothing romantic about a joint suicide. It's cruel. To you, to him, to your parents, and to the family that just buried someone. Those lungs are gorgeous. You can't do this. And it always feels like there is just one person in this world to love. And then you find somebody else. And it just seems crazy that you were ever worried in the first place. So let me has to find someone. He really has to try, because I don't want him to be alone. <laughs> She's gone. For real. I don't know how to tell him. Well, if I had to hear something like that, I'd want to hear from you. Well, what if he's her soulmate? You gotta be kidding me with this crap, Lexi. Nobody has just one soulmate. That makes such a dumb system. Look, Ricky and Julia deserve better than someone who makes them sick. You deserve better, too. Hey, there is more than one soulmate for everyone. And someone like you, there'd be a line at the door as soon as word got out. Oh, would you be in the line? Yeah. I'm in the line. Can we talk about it later? Yeah, okay. What well, can I pee before I go? April? What? Go downstairs. This is a shared space! Go downstairs! Is there anywhere you don't do it? I'm glad you came. I know it's awkward. No, you know, it, it's it's not. It's I'm I'm, hap I'm happy for you. Yeah. And uh, plus, I'm seeing somebody else. Really? Yeah. That's uh good for you. Do I know him? I should go. Yes, I will do a consult now. You're not fooling anyone. Car versus truck, that's all we know. And our injuries were with the baby? We don't know yet. That's Callie, that's my kid. Which is why you can't. I'm sorry, you can't be a doctor on this one. Just breathe. Callie, relax, we've got this. It's under control. Just breathe. I am not the kind of guy that waits around for the girl who's still in love with someone else. I'm just not. Jackson. Let's go home. What is it about guys with babies that makes women go crazy? Oh, everybody's looking at the baby and no one's looking at Mark. Except you. Uh, I should go. I am uh, really happy for you. You seem happy. I am. I have everything I always wanted. Almost. Staring at Sloan again? 
Oh, the, the baby. Did you see her? A well, 757 went down in the sound. We're looking at about 200 injured passengers. We're the designated crisis center. Families will be instructed to come here to find a loved one. My wife was on the plane. Can you please just... Sir, at this point, we don't have any information. Please just sign the sheet. I'd like to speak to your supervisor, somebody who knows what's going on. Man, my supervisor doesn't have any information. Nobody has any information. Please just sign the sheet. Still nobody? Oh, the families are going crazy. What is taking so long? Uh, fishing 200 people out of the water. Slow business. If it's taken this long, nobody survived. Emergency services has begun identifying bodies. Each of you have families to inform. So uh, please be outside the cafeteria in exactly one hour. You'll call one family at a time, and you'll be assigned a room to take them to and deliver the news. It's going to be a, a long day. I don't think I can do this three times. One foot in front of the other. Oh, I've got something there to cheer you up. Sloan gave us his blessing. Well, that's not really right. More like he gave you to me, which is nice. Are you serious? Yep. Hey, how you doing? Oh, not now, Mark. Oh, come on, Lexi. You've been in the dead zone all day. You have to stop. You gotta stop talking to me and checking on me and talking to my boyfriend. I love you. And I'm always gonna love you. But I don't want to love you. I want to be happy. And Jackson makes me happy. And if you keep pulling at me, I'm, I'll come back to you. You're right. I'm sorry. You got what you wanted. You wanted a family. Please, just let me have what I want. I said you were right. I told Avery I was letting you go. Did he tell you that part? Yeah, it's paternalistic and weird. I'm letting you go, Lexi. That means you gotta walk away. Gray, you over to me. Yes, ma'am. I will make sure that the scrub nurse separates your macro dissectors from your micros. I told her that yesterday, and she must have forgotten, which I know sounds like an excuse, and I am sorry for that, too. Lexi, yes. leave now. Nurse is OK. Hey, can you go have sex with him and make him be nicer? I told you he's going to be hard on you until you learn all of his quirks. They're not quirks. They're these scary, nitpicky rules just to drive me crazy. It's called a butterfly tumor because it extends into both sides of the brain. She has about six months. She's dying, so they decided to have a baby? Well, that's not the point. So I had St. Catherine send over all her scans, and I want you to take them to Derek and get him to do a consult. Derek hates me. You are better off taking them yourself. No, the only thing holding our marriage together is that we can't talk about Nero, so he can't know that I had anything to do with this. So you're using me? I'm your tumor mule? Do you want him to stop yelling at you? He needs to be inspired. This is the chart of a patient with a butterfly tumor. Butterfly tumors are not from... No, I, I, I know, but this patient, she's a new mom, and it, it's a really sad story, actually, but I was wondering if you could do a quick consult. This is why you needed to find me so urgently, to tell a woman her tumor is inoperable, to remind her how sad her story is. No, I, I, just I, I just... find the article. There it why is. didn't you tell Derek about Mary's tumor? I, I, I did. He said it was inoperable. Did you show him the scans? Did you tell him it was in the frontal lobe? I didn't get a chance. Um, I am naked and wet in the shower, so... Derek's a tumor junkie. He needs to see the scans and meet the patient to spark the case. Are you gonna remember all this or do I need to write it down? Naked and wet in the shower. I need to write it down. Look, butterfly tumor. He's amazing, right? Tell my husband, <laughs> he's pretty amazing. We got it. We got the whole tumor. Well, the surgeon in San Francisco said that even if you just got a little bit of it, the symptoms wouldn't be as bad. For now, um, until it grows back. Well, we'll take any relief that we can get. I'd like to come in from here, from above. I think I'd have a much better visualization, and I think I could get it all. But none of the eight other neurosurgeons we talked to even suggested that. It's because it's never been done before. Well, what are the risks? Um, well, you're passing between two hemispheres, so there's a greater risk of injury, including short-term memory loss, um, stroke, and even death. No. I understand. I really do. I'm gonna prove to her my way will work. How about now? Any lights? Yeah, supplemental motor area. Right, it's paralyzed the whole left side. So she's completely paralyzed. We hit the right side earlier. 
Hmm. Let's try another angle. Ding. Damn, what was that? Ornix. Oh, through to the base layer. So she'd be, uh... Mute, memory loss, brain dead. How's it going? I just can't find a clean approach. Try it again. All right. Ding. Did you play both? No, no. Yeah, I was pitcher. Really? Yeah. Right. The apartment's still happening. Mark's in love. Oh, an eye doctor. That should last 48 hours. Oh, yeah, well, I should be happy for him. You're still coming at it wrong. You're, you're, you're approaching the ball wrong. I'm holding the bat wrong? No, no, no. It's not the bat. It's your body. You need to adjust your head. Drop your shoulder. I mean, you're not connecting. The head's at the wrong angle. I've been adjusting the probe. You need to adjust the angle of her head. Tumor's dropped into the field. Let's tighten the device. You mean it's gone? You got it all? Yes, we won't know where we are for a couple days. <laughs> I, I, I did. I, I got it all. God, get a room. Oh, it's disgusting. Give the guy a break. She's on the opposing team. So what? He seems happy. He's happy, I'm happy. And you and me, we're we're happy, right? God, what is with the freaking hold up? Let's play ball! Pulling the pitcher. Shepard, get your glove. No, no, not me. Lexi, get your glove. Your relief pitcher? Hey, my grandma's not busy. She can pitch better than that. His girlfriend's gonna be okay, right? Ah, uh, it's her boob. She's in good hands. Are you gonna tell me what that was about or what? Yeah, I thought she was stealing second. No, you didn't. Go ahead. Say it. Say I told you so. He's been warning me about this for years, and I have been avoiding the surgery. But it's gonna have to wait until I'm done with my book. I went looking for patients who were told no by every doctor they've seen. So what are you going to do? Tell them yes. Tell them I will do my best. It's not just me, it's you too. You ready? Me? Mm-hmm. I... Yes, of course. What's this? Uh, Justine Campbell's uh, AMA form. She's leaving against medical Oh, advice. so you're not ready. What? Why? Yes. We're saying yes. If you can't get her to say yes to a simple surgery that will save her life, how do you expect to tackle that? Tear those up. Get her to say yes, and I'll let you jump on one of these. Okay? What do you say? Yes. Damn right. <laughs> you want to help me? Yeah. How fast can you type? If a thief sees a ring, he's going to take it. But he promised that he was going to change. Dr. Gray. What? I'm doing what you told me to do. I told you to get her to the OR. You're hosting a book club. She won't go into an OR until she finishes her book. I'm helping her finish. And how long will that take? You can't rush the creative process. Nathan pulled her into his arms and held on tightly. Kate whispered against his chest, I'm sorry. I am so, so sorry. Wait, what? She'd never know if he heard her. When she opened her eyes, Nathan was gone. She was in Paris. It was time to look for Alexander. What? She chooses Alexander? No. No way. It ha it has to be Nathan. It's not Nathan. What? He's he's so handsome and good. And and Alexander is her soulmate. They, they they don't even want the same things. They make each other miserable. Dr. Gray, I cannot betray my characters. You're the writer. You can make them do whatever you want. And, and picking Nathan, that is the right thing to do. <sighs> you hate it. No, I I know. No, you hate it. No. Oh God. Okay, Pete Shepard. And she, she's written this incredible story with these amazing characters, and then she just blows it. Wow, you're 15 right now. It's criminal what she's doing. So, what? They're going to be together for a few books, and then she's going to choose Alexander? Yeah. Do this thing with you and Mark. There is nothing between me and Mark. Yeah, I've been trying really, really hard to believe that. But there is a thing. And it's not going anywhere anytime soon. So I have to walk away from you. Can you, can you tell me I shouldn't? He's kind and funny, and incredibly honest. It's Kate. She doesn't love him. She should. I know. It's not fair. 
I know. But it makes for a really, really good read. Hey. Hey. Come here. Dr. Canner, thank you very much for showing up on such short notice. No problem. Fastball here just updated me about your patient. Again, I am I'm really sorry for hitting you. I'm fine. My breast made a quick recovery. <laughs> it did. Okay, Mark. Did I seem nervous in there? Just be, be honest with me. Oh, you, you seemed more than okay. Thank you, Dr. Gray. Damn it. <laughs> now I like her. Don't screw this one up. I like her. She's a keeper. Eight surgeons have said this is inoperable. Gotcha. What's this for? Heads we do it, tails we don't. You're insane. It's a gut check. I get a feeling when it's in the air, what I want it to land on. Flip it. Yeah, it's in a very large region of his spine. There is the very likely risk of paralysis. From his upper body down, there's also the risk of death. A death that he's gonna meet in three months anyway if you don't do this surgery. There is only a 5% chance of success. Maybe a little less. Yes, if you're willing, I'll try. Okay. Should I go tell Wes? Wait, um... There's something else. He, he doesn't know about his tumor. He's 11, a young 11. And knowing that he's very likely going to die is not something that's going to do him any good. What? What? Why does he think he's here? A backache. A very bad backache. Did the tumor grow more? What did you say? I know what I have. I overheard some doctors talking about it at the last hospital. Does your mom know that you know? No, she just freak out. She's your mom. She needs to know. She cries in the bathroom. She cries all the time. The only thing that makes her happy is to think that I don't know. You can't tell her. I promise. I won't tell. Do you think I'm going to die? I've worked with Dr. Shepard for a while now, and your mom could not have picked a better doctor for you. He's the best. Dr. Shepard's the best. You're right, as usual. There's a surgery that will kill him. We have no choice. We have to close him up. No. Dr. Gray, I no, think you're, it's time you're to just... quitting. Okay, it's, it's not right. Not when we said that we would try. There's a 5% chance. There is no him. longer a 5% chance. He knows about the tumor. He is known all along. I, to I, I told him that we would try. I told him that you were the best. Now, please, Derek, just please. Leave your right now. His, his mom's not going to tell him. And he's gonna wake up, and she's gonna tell him that it all went great, and he's gonna go home thinking that we did the surgery, not that he's gonna die in three months. You need to tell him. She's the parent. It is not our call. I'm sorry, no. You said after the surgery, I'd be stuck in here for a few weeks. That's what I did. You know, sometimes when we get in there, things change. That's why you get to go home. You don't have to worry about me. I'm gonna be with Dad in heaven. <laughs> they're not called lost causes because they're fun. I don't need them to be fun. I just need them to not be like today. Hmm. Okay, let's flip. Heads, you keep doing lost causes. Tails, you do the fun stuff. I'm in. Of course I'm in. Good. I can babysit tonight if you guys need some time to yourselves. Because I have uh, no plans. My life is empty. Alone with no plans whatsoever. At all. I have plans. Yep. I got a hot date. Our, our thing is, is young and fragile, too. Well, what about you? Hitting the town? <laughs> I'm not hitting much of anything these days. <laughs> oh, God, I'm sorry. That was crass. I ha uh, uh, have no found 
time's plans. <laughs> Did you get these from a patient? No. I bought these for Julia, but she's standing me up for an emergency ocular transplant surgery, so I'm gorging myself on Valentine's chocolate. I can do you one better. My hot date tonight, Zola. <laughs> I am babysitting. I'm just gonna go. I'm gonna go, and I'm gonna tell him. And if there is a, uh, no, I'm not gonna tell him. <laughs> of course. Uh, okay, of course. No, I'm gonna tell him because if you don't say anything, then you you bleed out and die, and I read about it in a plastic locket. I mean, what what do you, what do you think? What should I do, Zola? Well, tell me. Hey, I thought maybe the uh, the girls could have a play date and. Um, we could uh, uh, to talk, you know, about stuff, stuff that I've been wanting to say. Uh, oh, is that Julia? I'll, I'll go. Avery's cooking me dinner. Is that Julia? But he can go if you want to talk. Should he go? Nope, it's nothing. I am looking right at it. It's a gliosarcoma that has invaded the carotid artery. Try and remove it, you'll stroke out. Stop being a jackass. <sighs> I'm, she, call, she called you a jackass. Dr. Gray, excuse us. Dr. Gray, stay here. I need backup. We've operated on worse. Sexy, she showed us a picture of a little boy. I know. It, it's clear that she is passionate. My sister's too emotionally wrapped up in this patient to clearly see that she can't help this woman. You know, it tells me that she's passionate enough to try harder. And well, all the passion in the world is not going to make her plan doable in 90 seconds. You need to see that for yourself? Fine, set it up. Mm, you're going to be the one who sees a thing. I mean, thank you. You know what else would be harder? Going through the carotid. It would be harder. But there'd be better control than going through the femoral. But I swear you gotta stop encouraging her. We, this is what you taught me to do. You taught me to not, not give up until we've tried everything. Because you can handle it. When we lose a patient, I know if you're okay or you're not because I'm right there with you. But with her, I cannot do that. Because I don't think she can handle it. Not now. You are the one who is too emotionally involved. Okay, if this tumor had come to you from any other doctor, you would still be looking at it. You are so worried about your sister's outcome that you won't even think about her patients. Am I wrong? Call your patient. Get her up here. Guess what? I'm on Pete's today. Babies. Yay! Nick, you're not the nursery. It can get pretty intense. My God, he's the size of a soda can. 14 ounces. He's acting like the baby is already dead. But look at him. He's a champ. You're like a little Muhammad Ali, aren't you? Someone's peppy. Well, she's on a vacation from lost cause brain surgery. These are his chances of survival. Right here. This is reality. Now you're a doctor. Think like one. They are basically giving this kid a death sentence. Parents have made up their mind. Just let me eat my food in peace. Ali doesn't even have any parents as far as I can see. And you know what? She is your intern. You need to step up. All I'm saying. Look, let it go. Let all you. I'm saying is parents did not decide his treatment plan. Doctors did. Math did. I can't wait to get back to neuro. At least with lost causes, you know where you stand. And the patients can tell you when they have had enough. I don't know how Morgan can bear it. I don't know how any of you can. Jolene Jordama, one pound, four ounces at birth. She's 12 years old now. She's a goalie, one pound, two ounces at birth. He's nine years old, plays a trumpet. Some of them survive. We open up the wall of the cyst so that it can drain freely, and then the fluid won't collect. So your dizzy spells will stop. But you said you found a tumor. Mm -hmm, we did. It's a small one. It's called meningioma. It's benign, so we're going to leave it alone. If it ever does cause a problem, it's easy enough to remove. Dr. Gray could do it. Oh, go girl. So this is it. This is it. We will see you when it is all over. Thank you. Dr. Gray, so glad you could join us. I've been kidnapped. Great. It's a perfect cranial <sighs> Right, Dr. Gray? You drive me back into neuro to watch Lexi do a boring procedure. Hey, it is not boring. Boring is her first solo cyst. Be a big sister, cheer for mom.
Shepard, I've got a motorcycle cop open on the table to see seven fracture. I need your eyes on the court. Can you? All right, I'll be right there. She knows what she's doing. Just observe. I'll be right back. If you need anything. We won't go. There. Okay. Look at that. That's her tumor. Oh, my God. There it is. Do we check it out? I mean, he said it would be easy that I, I could do it. I know, and it's right there. What are you doing here? We're finished. Sister's training. She did great. And get this, Lexi resected the meningioma. Perfect margins. She was perfect. You did what? Took the tumor out. Why the hell would you do that? Well, responses are good. Follow this for me up, down. How are you feeling? Honey, we're right here. Well, that's a good sign. Ask me, dog. It's called aphasia, part of the brain that helps control how she forms words. It's damaged in the surgery. There is a chance with therapy that she will regain some of her function. Some? What the hell did you do to her? Mr. Boston. I am sorry. I I had the best intentions. It was an outcome that I did not foresee. It was my mistake. You weren't even in the room. My mistake was leaving you two in there alone. I can't believe you would do this. I thought if you had seen the tumor. You didn't think at all. Okay, it's my fault. Let's just let it be my fault. This will kill Lexi. It'll destroy her confidence. Does she even have to know? Of course she does. She's not strong enough. Then she shouldn't be a surgeon. Did she wake up yet? Tell me that he can fix it. He can't. It's irreparable. What do you mean? I mean, she's not going to be able to talk? She's 27. She, he, he has to fix it. I mean, there, there has to be something. There isn't. I mean, this is my fault, too. I shouldn't have let you do it. Oh, God. Oh my God, she, I, it, 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 it was right there. I, 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 I never would have done it if, you saw it? I know, I know. You're not gonna cry right now. You're gonna go and talk to Derek and he is gonna be pissed and disappointed and he's gonna scream at you and he won't look at you for days. Just take it. Close up and you make a plan for that. I know, I, I, I know that. Do you? Do you? Because if you had taken the time to look, you would have opted to approach the tumor from this angle and Lori would be speaking right now. This is stupid. Stupid, arrogant mistake. I feel like Julia and I are at a crossroads. It's been five months. Maybe it's time to take the next step and ask her to move in. You like Julia, right? You will mobilize the aneurysm and place the clip. Wait, I'm clipping the aneurysm? What if it ruptures? I, I clip proximal and distal to the aneurysm. What if you damage the perforating vessels? I throw a temporary clip on the parent artery. It's okay if you don't want me to do it. I, I know that I, I really messed up last week. Yes, you did. But you're still a student, and this is how you learn. Any other questions? Are you going to tell Mark to move in with Julia? I mean, what do they even really talk about? You know, she sews eyeballs for a living. It's, it's gross. I mean, plus she has really thin hair, which can be an, a sign of really menopause. We don't talk about stuff like this. We don't talk about stuff like this. I will see you in pre-op. Make sure his labs are up to date, and then we'll take him up to pre-op. What is wrong with you? I, kn I know, I know that we don't, we don't talk about this stuff, okay? But, but I, I kind of need to talk about this stuff because what if I don't, and then I miss an opportunity to appeal to my big brother about, you know what? What if Mark is my soulmate? I am not your best friend right now, Lexi. I am not your big brother. I am your attending, and what I need is my resident. You're right. I'm sorry. I, I am your resident. Good. Make sure our patient is prepped. You have an aneurysm to clip. I'm not going to tell Mark what to do. You're not. We're going to move in together either way. Man has always been easy to read. And the only thing that could change that is if he knew he still had a shot with you. Really? He's happy with the eyeball doctor. So make sure you want him back because you want him, not because he's with somebody else. Bobby? Bobby. Parking lot? Parking lot. Uh, you know what? I, um, I forgot that I have some charting to do, so have a great night.
I need you, Lex. Hi. Uh, uh, what? I need you. I'm stuck with an intern who thinks that debriding the necrotic tissue is the title of a Nine Inch Nails album. Are you sure it's not? It might be. I'm not familiar with their later work. You're just sad because Jackson is off to take his boards. You and I work well together. We understand each other. Like you and I used to, you know? So I need you. I can't. All right. Thought it would be fun working together again. But if you're busy... Mark, wait. You should check out the latest Nine Inch Nails album. It is pretty fresh. Okay. I said fresh. We're not all hopeless. I know. I'm spoiled with Avery. What the hell happened to you two? Why'd you break up? To be continued. Okay. This is nice. Talking to you. I miss it. I miss you. I miss you too. And the reason that Jackson and I broke up. Oh, you know it, what? We don't have to talk about that. It's really it's none of my business, so forget I asked. Oh, but as your friend, if you're not over him, you should tell him. Mark said that, um, that he misses me. But I miss him. You know, I, uh, I really, I really miss him. You know, and he, he thinks that I still love Jackson, but I try to tell him that I don't, try to tell him that I still love him. But I, I open my mouth and nothing comes out. And everything is terrible. It's gonna be okay. It's gonna be okay. I'm gonna be your big brother for 30 seconds. Okay. Uh, Julia wants to have a baby with Mark. She what? What did she say? Well, I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? What did he say? I, I, how did it go down? My 30 seconds of brotherly advice is over. I gotta no, go check on patient. No, I, oh, does he want to do it? I mean, does it seem like he was excited about it? Or does he seem like that's an insane idea? Because it is. I hope you told him that it's an insane idea. The temporalis muscle is atrophied. Any idea why, Dr. Gray? Uh, lack of use. It had nowhere to attach since the bone was gone. That's right. It's too late for this muscle. It's missed its chance to attach. Why are we talking about the temporalis? Teachable moment, Dr. Slow. Stay out of it. Once you inject the fat into Charlie's temple, the muscle will... Begin with the muscle? Yeah, the once healthy muscle will slowly wither to nothing all alone surrounded by a thick layer of fat. You did a good job in there. Thanks. You okay? I love you. Oh, God, oh my God, that just came flying out of my face. It was just some kind of, I, I, lo I love you. I just, God, did it again. I, 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 I love you, I, I do, I just, I, I love you, and I have been trying not to say it. I have been trying so hard to just mash it down and ignore it and not say it, and Jackson is a great guy. He, he is, he's, he's gorgeous, and, and, and he's younger than you, and he doesn't have any grandkids or, or babies with his lesbian BFFs, and he's an Avery, and, and he liked me. You know, he, he really liked me, but it was never gonna work out because I, I love you. I am so in love with you. And you're, you're, you're in me. It's, you're like, it's, it's like you're a disease. It's like I am infected by Mark Sloan. And I just can't, I can't think about anything or anybody. And I can't sleep. I can't breathe. I can't eat. And I love you. I just, I love you all, all the time. It's every minute of every day. And I, 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 love you. God, that feels good just to, just to say that. Just, I'm, I feel so much better. I'm just, I love you. Mark. Hey, Lexi. I thought you said the lobby. You ready? Dr. Shepard. Dr. Sloan. Lexi, come on in. 
Oh. Plenty of room. Uh, you know, actually, I was just going to update you on the Boise doctor's bios, but since you're both here, I'm just going to give it to you, and then that way I can leave. Oh, uh, no, you guys go. <laughs> I'm going to stay. Oh, hey, Lexi, about that other thing, don't think I forgot what you said. I just need to ruminate on that, you know, run it up the old flagpole. Okay. Got that? Is it too heavy for you? No, I'm I'm fine, but thank you. No, uh, thank you. Lexi! Lexi. Lexi. How is she? She's awake and responsive. I'm gonna get you out of here, okay? Okay. We gotta get her out of there. Lexi, run it down for me. My legs and my pelvis are crushed. And I can't f feel my other arm, so I'm not sure it's even there anymore. And my chest feels like it's gonna explode, so it's probably a massive hematorrhage. Why aren't you doing anything? She, she knows it won't no. help. No, you? are gonna be fine. Stop! You're gonna be fine! <laughs> I'm gonna be right back. She'll be back any minute. Mark, I'm... I'm dying. Another one, Lexi. Was? She died out there in the woods. My sister died out there. You have another sister? Mm-hmm. 
My kid sister, Lexi. I loved her. I miss Lexi. I miss her so much. Me too. Lexi! <laughs> I love it here. I was big on rules. I actually, like, I think I loved rules. <laughs> you totally did. So you two are together. Looks like we are. Having of a life and a body isn't cause for celebration, then what's the point of avoiding death? I mean, just if, if you're not going to enjoy it, then you might as well join him. The depth of grief that you felt with all the losses, it's because of the depth of love. As long as you're alive, you get to feel it. And you get to do something about it. Everything changes all the time when you're alive. And all the time, you fight the change. You cling on to what you have and what you know, like, that's how it should always be. It's such a waste of life. Right? What's a waste? Fighting change. Resisting pain. I miss you both so much. That's kind of a waste of time, too. Why? Because we never left you. Don't waste it, Meredith. Waste what? Don't waste one single minute.